Welcome to episode five of The Six Shifts with Katie Egan Cunningham, Jan Bergens, and Carrie Yates, co-authors of Shifting the Balance, Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading into the Upper Elementary Classroom, published by Stenhouse Publishers. In this series, Katie, Jan, and Carrie, along with The Six Shifts Maggie Thorson, address six new evidence-based shifts that teachers can make to bring the science of reading into the upper elementary classroom. Our previous episode focused on recommitting to vocabulary instruction. In this episode, the authors talk about the fourth new shift, reclaiming word recognition instruction in intermediate grades. Welcome back. Today, we're going to continue our path through each of the new shifts in Shifting the Balance 3 through 5. Before we take a jump into Shift 4 on word reading instruction, Let's just take a minute for our listeners who might just be joining us and share with them a little bit about some of the big ideas of this new book. What a great question, Maggie. Uh, You know, literacy instruction is such intense and serious work. And teachers show up every day ready to do their level best to help children become readers and writers. And what we found is there's been this growing tension, frustration, maybe even confusion in the field about which of our current practices really do hold up in light of research and reading science, and which of them might have been based on ideas that, although we might have been really well-intentioned, just aren't as brain-friendly as we thought. Yes, and, and the Shifting the Balance books have been really cultivated in the soil of some competing tensions, these tensions that Katie was just describing And so we wanted to use research-based practices, but we've also wanted learning to be engaging and joyful for our students. And we've wanted students to develop strong foundational skills, but we never want to lose sight of the ultimate end goal, which is meaning-making. So kind of juggling those competing tensions becomes a real challenge. Yes, so you're mentioning foundational skills. And shift four is titled Reclaiming Word Reading Instruction for the Intermediate Grades. But word reading instruction has largely been relegated to the primary classroom with that idea that older elementary students really shouldn't need much more instruction in that area. Can you talk about that assumption and what you found as you studied the research? Maggie, that is it is a common assumption. In fact, the, the very first misunderstanding we tackle in this shift is the idea that by the time they're in the intermediate grades, students should have mastered word recognition. But there are just lots of children who haven't mastered the code yet and who need explicit instruction in order to become accurate, automatic, skilled readers. They need that instruction still in the intermediate grades. And the truth for all readers is that with these 200 plus graphemes and all sorts of variations about how syllables come together in multisyllabic words, English with its deep orthography is much more complex than can possibly be taught in the primary grades alone. And you know, because students enter these intermediate grades with such a wide range of skills, teachers are really faced with two distinct instructional challenges for word recognition instruction, or at least I really know that I face these in the decade that I spent in these grade levels. And so we talk about in the book that teachers in intermediate grades have this filling gaps challenge of really working to meet the needs of students that we know haven't gotten off to as strong a start with reading, and they have real gaps in their learning, and they need us to help them fill them. And then we have the second challenge, which is the moving forward challenge. And that's helping all readers develop the skills they need for reading multisyllabic words, and that they do it with increased ease while also continually growing the stores of words that they can recognize by sight. What are a few other misunderstandings that might be getting in the way when it comes to helping kids build stores of words they recognize instantly and automatically? Well, misunderstanding number four is that learning to read multisyllabic words is mostly about learning the rules of syllabication. (laughs) And it's one that 
you know, as we dug into the science, it helped us clear up some of our own confusions about how to best support children as they develop confidence with reading and writing, especially those long words, right? And there is actually quite a bit that does need to be taught about syllables and about syllabication rules and how syllables go together, but the rules are far from perfect, especially as words get longer. And, you know, we're guessing that many of our readers will be surprised about what close analysis of written English reveals about patterns in syllables. You know, there is definitely important work to be done to help students develop confidence with reading and writing the big long words that pop up everywhere as they rise through the grades. Mm -hmm. I heard somebody once refer to those multisyllable words as the big long freak out words. (laughs) (laughs) Right. After giving some time and attention to big long freak out words. And then in Misunderstanding 5, we tackle the common concern that devoting a lot of instructional time to word recognition in the intermediate grades will take away from a focus on comprehension. And we agree time is the absolute most precious resource we have in education, but researchers estimate that for intermediate level students who are reading below grade level, they misread as many as one in every six words. And if you just imagine how one in every six words impacts comprehension and motivation. And then to make things even more complicated, many readers have learned some not so helpful word reading hacks that while they may have worked with much simpler text, they just don't hold up as texts get more complex. So an investment in word reading skills is ultimately an investment in comprehension. I can't believe we're coming to a close of shift four already. What are you hoping that teachers will feel empowered by in regards to word reading skills at the end of shift four? We hope that all teachers will feel really empowered to develop or refine their skills for both assessing and also teaching word recognition skills in the intermediate grades. And I think readers will be really excited if they're not familiar with them already to be introduced to instructional routines like mapping phonemes and graphemes in sound boxes or the ways in which we support teachers to mark up and help students to also write big words that Carrie was talking about. And also using spelling dictation as a simple formative assessment where you can really see what students are doing and give them that feedback right away. We also hope that every intermediate teacher will find the time and develop the confidence for both targeted small group instruction so that they can address the filling the gaps challenges and whole group word study instruction to meet the moving forward challenges of students. So the routines we offer were carefully selected for high utility in both of these contexts because it's quite quite a tricky dance to address both of these challenges. Katie, Jan, and Carrie, thank you for sharing your insights on Shift 4, reclaiming word reading instruction in the intermediate grades. I know it's one that will mean so much to so many teachers. Thank you for your time. Shifting the Balance, Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading into the Upper Elementary Classroom by Katie Egan Cunningham, Jan Birkins, and Carrie Yates is available from Stenhouse Publishers. You can learn more about these six new shifts, the six shifts from the first book, and the companion online classes for both books at www.thesixshifts.com. We hope you enjoyed listening to The Six Shifts. In the next episode, we'll explore Shift 5, which is about fluency instruction. Guess what? Fluency instruction is about a lot more than reading rate. Join us to find out what research says about how to make readers more fluent. We'd love to hear your feedback. Get in touch with us at marketing at stenhouse.com and please share this with your colleagues who you think would enjoy listening too. Thanks for listening.